Hey guys, it's Andrew, and in this video we're going to make another JavaScript decorator. This time we're going to use decorators kind of like Angular 2 does. If you've played around with Angular 2 at all, you know that you can use decorators to create components and other parts of the web application. So in this video we're going to try and make a little bit of that from scratch, and we'll see how we can do. Now before we get started, we will need to change the language to Babel, and we're also going to include the Lodash library, which will give us template support. Okay, so we have those things in there. Up here in our HTML, let's just create a my app element, and we'll just give it the text loading. And what we're going to do is have our app render inside of this element. Okay, so how exactly is this going to work? Well, we're going to do something like we might do in Angular 2. So with Angular 2, we can make a class that we're going to call um, our to-do list component. And this class will have a set of to-dos, which is an empty array. And then, of course, our class is going to need a constructor. Our constructor here might push a few to-do items in there for us just to get started. Okay, so we have our to-dos, but let's say we want to render this in a template. How might we render this component? Well, the way we would do this with Angular 2 would be to use a decorator called component. And in Angular 2, we would give this component decorator an object with options, and we need two specific options. The first one is the selector, which in our case will just be my app. This selector will be searched for inside of our document, and we'll use this component wherever we find a copy of this selector. So that means the loading text here will be replaced with the template that our component renders. Now the template is actually the second property here. We can add a template here, and I'm going to use backticks so that this can be a multi-line string. We'll have an h1 here, and then underneath this we'll have our unordered list of to-do elements. Now as we mentioned, we're including Lodash here for template support, so we're going to be using Lodash's template function. So this just needs to be a template that will work with Lodash. So what we'll have here is, we'll assume we have a list of to-dos, and we'll say to-do.foreach, and um, let's see, this is going to take a to-do, and we'll have our function here. And then we'll have to close this function down here. And then in here, we can actually use our to-do item. So in here, we can have a list item. And uh, inside, we will have to-do.text. And uh, let's actually add some simple styling here. And this styling will be text decoration. And then we will interpolate once again here. If we have to-do.done, then we will use line through. Otherwise, we will have none. So there's our template. So how can we go about rendering this template? Well, what we need to get this to work is two things. First of all, we need our component decorator, right? So we need a function here called component, and this component will take a config object. And this is where we will register our component in here. But then we're also going to need a function called init. And this is the function that will actually start up our application. If you've used Angular or other libraries, this is considered the bootstrapping phase, where this function is called to actually load the application into the browser. And so actually down at the bottom here, underneath where we create this class, we'll go ahead and call init. And um, once we write those functions, calling init will actually render this code. So let's see what we need to do inside component. Now, once again, this component function is not actually our decorator. It's going to return a function that is the decorator, right? Because we need to pass some parameters. However, when we're using a decorator to decorate a class instead of a method, the decorator takes only one argument, and that is the target class, which we have just created. So what we're going to do in here is we'll say, let's set config.template to be underscore or lodash, I should say, dot template, and we will run config dot template. This way, we're converting our template here from a string to a function which will return the HTML that this generates. So we can pass our data to this template function now. Inside of our decorator function here, let's take the config object and let's assign a class as one of its properties and the target class that we've just created will be the class for that config. And then finally, we need an array of components. So at the top here, we'll create an array of components. That will just be an empty array for now. But then in here, 
we can say components.push and we'll push that config in as one of the components that we will need to use when it comes time to initialize our application. Now we don't actually have to return anything here because this doesn't actually modify our class in any way really. Instead it just registers this component in our list of components. So now in our initialization function, what do we have to do? Well basically we just need to loop over all the components in our array and instantiate them on our page. And at this point I do want to say that what we're doing here is a very very basic version of how something like this might be done. And this is in no way at all um, how Angular works, or I would assume it is not in any way at all, because I haven't ever actually looked into the Angular code. But what we're doing here is just super basic, and there would be tons of flaws if we were to try to use this actual code in a bigger application. But we're just having some fun here, right? So let's go ahead and loop over this components array. And for each one of the components, what are we going to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is find every place within our code here where we need to create an instance of this component. So let's do document.query selector all. And we're going to query for component.selector, right? Because we have that selector on our component object. So component.selector, and then we can say for each and we have the nodes, and each one of these nodes that we're looping over now needs to be one of these objects. So let's go ahead and create our instance. This is going to be new component.class, because remember, inside of our component directive, this is where we saved the actual class as the class property in this config object. So we have our new instance, and now all we have to do is say node.innerHTML equals component.template, and we're going to pass in the instance that we just created. So it's kind of that simple for a start, right? We just need to find all of the elements that need to be this type of component. We create a new component object for each one of them, and then we render the template based on the object that we created. So now if we go ahead and run this, we should see over here, we have a to-do list rendering in the way we want. And that is actually pretty impressive, I think. However, at this point, there's not a lot that we can do with it. We cannot check off these to-do list items by clicking on them. So let's go ahead and create another decorator for events. But before we do that, let's create an event handling function in our class here. Let's see, so we're going to have a handle click function, which will take our event object, and we can figure out which list item was clicked here by doing uh, e.target.innerText. And so we can filter our to-dos object. So we'll say let to-do equal uh, this.todos.filter, where the to-do is to-do.text is equal to e.target.innerText. Just to be sure, let's go ahead and trim that. And then we only need, of course, a single item. So let's get the first item that was filtered because they should have unique names, we will assume. Okay, so now all we have to do is uh, set to do dot done equal to, and let's just set it to the opposite of whatever it is so that we can both complete and uncomplete them. Okay, so that's all we're going to need to do. Now, how might we actually connect this click handler with our list item here? Well, what we can do is use the at event decorator, which we will create here. And we're going to listen for a click event and we're going to listen to the selector li. So the first parameter here will be the event type and the second will be the selector for the element within this template that we want to use this function for. Okay, so now up here we can create a function which we're going to call event and this needs to take two properties, right? Uh, the first one is the type, and the second one is a selector. And this is going to return the actual decorator function. This is going to work on uh, methods, of course, so we're going to take the target, the key, and the descriptor. And the target here, of course, is going to be the class, once again, because this method is a method of a class object. And more specifically, it's actually a method on the prototype of the class. So if we say target dot underscore events as a place where we can register these events initially while waiting for bootstrap to happen, we know that target here is referring to the prototype. So let's do this. Let's say if there is no target events, then we'll set target underscore events to be an empty object. If there is no target dot underscore events square bracket type, because we're going to have an array for each of these types of clicks or types of, I should say, events that we need. So if that does not exist, then we'll say target dot underscore events square bracket type equals an empty array. Then we just have to say target dot underscore events square bracket type dot push and we're going to push in an object here. And this is going to have that selector 
as one of its properties. So the selector will go in. And then we're also going to need our function, which will be descriptor.value. And that should be enough to register the function. And then we will just return the descriptor as you have to do when working with functions. So that is our event decorator. But of course, this doesn't give us events just yet. If we try and run this, as you can see, nothing is happening. And this is because up here in Bootstrap, we need to wire up these event handlers. Okay, so let's do this right after we set up the HTML here. Now we have our instance here, right? And we can get that events object on the prototype of our instance. So we'll do object.keys for each one of these keys. And remember, each one of these keys is an event type that we want to register. And what we're going to do actually is use event delegation. So we'll listen for events on the top level element of our component. And then if it's the individual elements that are clicked on, we can go ahead and run our function. So let's see, we have the top level node right here. So we can say node dot add event listener, and we'll add an event listener for that type. And then we'll have our function here. Now in here, we need to loop over all of the different occurrences of this event that we may have in our array of events of this type. Because remember, down here in event, we created an array for each type of event and then pushed it in. So we could have multiple, for example, click events. And so we need to handle each one of those. So we'll say our instance dot underscore events square bracket type dot for each. And um, for lack of a better term, we'll just call this an item. This is actually, I guess you could say an event instance or something like that. Anyway, the important thing here is that this item has two properties, a selector, which we're looking to match and a function, which we'll need to call if the target of the event that just occurred matches the selector on the item that we're looping over. Now that sounds complicated, and initially I wasn't sure how we would do it, but it turns out that some browsers at least support a element method called matches. And the way this works is we can say if event dot target and remember event dot target is the element that was clicked or had the event occur on it so if event dot target dot matches and we can pass in a selector so in our case that's item dot selector if that matches then we can go ahead and call this by saying item dot function dot call and we can call it on the instance right so that we're calling it within the same context that our handle click function here, for example, was written so that this will refer to our class instance, right? So we're calling it on instance and we're going to pass it that event as its parameter so that it can work with the actual event object. And it's really that simple. However, there is one small thing that we're missing here. If we go ahead and run this and I click these, as far as you know, nothing is happening because we don't see any difference. And the problem is that even though we've actually changed the data here, we don't have any of the two-way binding that something like Angular would have built in. And so our template here is not being re-rendered. And we can kind of cheat with this. What we'll do is because most of the time there is no return value needed from an event handler, we can just say that if our event handler returns true, that means we do want to re-render the template after this function has been called. And that's actually pretty simple to do. Let's say let re-render here equal the return value of that function. And then we can just say if re-render, and then we can just copy this line right up here where we set the inner HTML. So we copy that and paste it there, and it should be that simple. So now let's go ahead and save this. And now if I click buy milk, pick up cat, you can see it crosses them out or uncrosses them. That's pretty good. Now this is of course very basic, but we have enough features here to make it easily extendable. For example, if we were to, let's throw a paragraph into our template here, and let's go ahead and add an input element there. And then we can write another function here. And this is going to, uh, let's just call it handle key press. And so what we can do here is say if e.key is enter, then let's say this dot to do's dot push, and we'll push in a new to do with the text that is in e.target.value. And then we can set e.target.value equal to an empty string. And then we can just return true. And actually, one of the unfortunate parts of this is that since we're re-rendering everything every single time, we don't actually have to set this value to empty because this text box is only going to exist for a split second after this function is called because return true will re-render it. So let's not forget to add our event decorator here. We're looking for the key press event, and this is going to happen on the input element. And 
let's see, that should work. If we just run this now and we add one called pay bills, I hit enter and there you can see it's added to the list. And of course we can complete or incomplete it just like the others. Now, of course, there are several flaws with this code that we've written. The biggest one, of course, that you might think is that we're never removing our event handlers here every time we re-render this code. So that could cause some memory issues eventually if this was a much larger application. But I think it's a simple, fun example for the types of things that you can do with decorators. As you can see, with just a little bit more work, you could build a simple library that gives you some of the tools that you might use from a library like Angular without a lot of the bloat if you're building a very small application. So, there you go. Another cool use for JavaScript decorators. Let me know what you think in the comments, and thanks for watching.